So just recently, I went and played Sonic Colors Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch, and I was thinking about doing a review for the channel. But after completing the game, I was pretty let down. In fact, last year, I played Sonic Unleashed for the first time after hearing how many people had praised these two games for their amazing gameplay and level design. But unfortunately, both of these games just left a void in my heart for my favorite hedgehog. Sure, these games games had a couple good levels in them, but they hardly left an impression other than disappointment. It seems like the last decent Sonic game that came out was Sonic Generations, but that feels like a cop-out because it's just a greatest hits title that just remixes Sonic's best levels, so the hard work was already done for the developers. Ever since I could hold a controller, I've been a big fan of Sega's Blue Mascot, but I didn't start on his 2D games. I got my start Start playing the early 3D games, mostly the titles that were released on the GameCube, like Sonic Adventure 1, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, and Sonic Heroes. But ever since Sonic 06 released, it seems that the Blue Blur has had a real rough time finding his footing in the 3D world. 3D Sonic has gone through the adventure style games, the boost style games, and then Generations really tried to marry the 3D and 2D game styles together. So if I ask you what the definitive 3D Sonic game was, it will probably depend on what you grew up playing. 2D Sonic fans get to pick their cake and eat it too with titles like Sonic Mania and Sonic Origins coming out. And all the 3D Sonic games lately rely on putting 2D sections in their level Levels, but I miss just the 3D platforming and level design from the adventure games. To this day, I think Sega and Sonic Team got the closest to what a 3D Sonic title should be with those style of games. Now, they are by no means perfect, but they were definitely onto something. I haven't seen Sonic's colorful cast of characters utilized this well since Sonic Adventure 1 and Sonic Adventure 2. There is so much personality with the music and level design. Every level has its own distinct palette and song that would tie the character and the environment together. I even have a guilty pleasure for levels like Final Rush that granted the player freedom in taking different paths to get to the goal. And the story is so bombastic in those games and epic that it's even creeped into the live action Sonic movies. From what we have seen in Sonic Frontiers, it's another possibility that we won't be able to play as any of Sonic's friends. Sonic Frontiers is said to be released this holiday season, and it does have the potential of being a great title for Sonic. Despite IGN saying that there are plenty of bugs to squash before its release. But recently, I discovered that there is an indie game that was inspired by the Sonic Adventure games, Spark the Electric Jester 2. This game is what so many fans have been demanding from Sega and Sonic Team. There is such a big fan base for those games that they are just sleeping on. Spark the Electric Jester 2 not only succeeds in playing like a Sonic Sonic Adventure game, but even takes it further by adding in combat and cleaning up some of the mechanics from the older games. Most levels offer many different pathways so the player can explore them to find the quickest route through the level. Even the music feels like it's from Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, and by the way, did I mention that this was all made by one guy? That's right, Lake Feppard has been making his own Sonic titles for some time. Just fan-made games. But he finally made his own IP that plays just like a Sonic game. His first outing played like the classic 2D Sonic. 
in his second game, they play like the 3D adventure games. And he has a third title on the way, and it could be coming to consoles. This single developer captures the speed, the essence, of what a 3D Sonic game should be. So tell me, why should I buy a AAA title from a corporation that continues to neglect its fans? i much rather support this diehard fan of the genre from moving heaven and earth to create a game that so many fans have been asking for. So even though in my thumbnail I said that this game killed Sonic, it's actually the opposite. Spark the Electric Jester 2 saves the playstyle of the 3D Sonic games that fans have been wanting to play. The Sonic Adventure games are not very accessible unless you play them on PC. When I know there are probably thousands of fans that would buy the remastered versions if they would port them over to something like the Switch or the PlayStation. Lake Feppard, we simply do not deserve you, and please secure Spark the Electric Jester 3 a place on console so I can pick up a copy when it releases. I will be keeping a close eye on Sonic Frontiers, but based on what I've seen so far, I'm not sold. Between this and Kenobi slowly losing its magic, it's been kind of gloomy over here. I made the channel with all intents and purposes for it being a creative, positive outlet. But lately, a lot of things have just been a swing and a miss, so we've got to turn that around. We do have Thor 4 coming next month, so maybe Taika Watiki will wow us with that. But guys, that's it for this episode, so until next time, y'all be good, peace. Baby, baby.